And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everyone on YouTube for some Chu Lane Adventure in Best of One Standard. That's right, we got Bant Adventures that we're going to be playing here. And the reason why I wanted to play Bant is because I wanted to play the Teller of Tales, Chu Lane. I basically was just kind of looking at this card thinking of how to find a home for it. We've tried playing this card with like Risen Reef, um, ETB focus decks with Charming Prince and uh, Prime Speaker Vanifar and stuff like that. But those decks aren't necessarily just the strongest um, on their own. And or like those cards aren't necessarily the strongest on their own. It doesn't play good enough defense and all of that kind of stuff. So instead, I wanted to try this with the adventure creatures because we've seen just how strong adventure creatures are in standard. Like they're they're amazing and uh, they're all two for ones and that's not enough. You get in a incredible engine card with innkeeper. Same with Lucky Clover. Since two for ones aren't enough, we've got to just make them three for ones and four for ones and stuff like that. So that's what we're going to be trying here with Chu Lane. Because I feel like Chu Lane's really powerful. Every time we cast a creature, we get to draw a card and then we can put a land from our hand onto the battlefield. It's not even tapped or anything like that. It's it's just put the land onto the battlefield. Um, so yeah, it's it's just Growth Spiral. So every... Uh, it sure is, Kendis. Every... Um, Every creature that we play will have a growth spiral attached to it. Plus, we can pay three, tap it, and return a creature that we control to its owner's hand. So we can use it to rebounce our adventure creatures to cast the adventure part again. You know, like maybe we want to bounce a brazen borrower so we can bounce their stuff. You know, bounce a giant killer to destroy another creature. Bounce Fae of Wishes. Of course, also, best of one, Fae of Wishes is very powerful, giving you that, that sideboard. Um, that you get to work with, and you could get to go um, have your extra sideboard cards depending on the matchup that uh, you get to use as well. So <clears throat> I just kind of wanted to combine the, these together. We w Our best starts are going to be like Lucky Clover on two into Beanstalk Giant where we ramp. We want to ramp. We want to have a lot of mana. Chew Lane also helps us with getting more lands into play. So we want like Innkeeper and Chew Lane being our engine cards, drawing lots of cards. Um, and trying to get lots of mana, and then with lots of mana, we can use the granted part of Fae of Wishes and go and play expensive, um, game-breaking non-creature spells from the sideboard. Um, so that's, that's the goal of the deck. So hopefully we just stay alive long enough to do all that. Um, and, uh, Kenrith can do all of the modes here because of Paradise Druid. We got Paradise Druid that can do all the modes with Kenrith. Um, but yeah, we're going to ramp and, uh, hopefully stay alive and do some crazy stuff with lots of mana. Here we go. All right. Thanks for that donation deck there, Kendis. All right. So we're going to be playing over in ranked. We're going to play seven games with Chu Lane Adventure. And we'll see how it goes. Um, we go first double fabled passage we do have beanstalk giant there's 26 lands in the deck i think we keep it we're not playing edgewall innkeeper right away of course we at least want to be able to protect edgewall innkeeper with shepherd of the flock We'll just cast this love struck beast. Ooh, another five drop. That is not what we want to see. <laughs> yeah, this is a value town deck right here. Is my opponent playing Rakdos Control? Possible. It's 
So I'm trying to bait out a removal spell here. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I, we do have lands other than Fabled Passage in here. <clears throat> but of course, we have a ton of basics because of Beanstalk Giant, especially Beanstalk Giant with Lucky Clover. So we have um, 11 basics. And so therefore, I have the four Fabled Passage to go along with the 11 basics. I feel like I should just be picking up the innkeeper like right now anyway before they'd have the chance to play like a fable passage. Usher to safety. I really want to draw a six land here. Six land would be the best. Really want to draw land. Ugh, brazen Barber. All right, so I either play, I'll just play two lane. I'm gonna say we either play two lane or we could go, you know, like innkeeper, lovestruck beast. But this lets us do maybe, you know, like innkeeper, shepherd, um, if we, and then if, by then, if we draw a land, then beast. This lets us have a pretty amazing turn if we draw more stuff. But the thing is, is I'm I'm more vulnerable to just a removal spell on Chu Lane, attacking for six. Start That damage starts adding up. But this is my best... This is my best case scenario if they don't have removal for Chu Lane. Um, so yeah, we only have five mana. It costs six to do Innkeeper, Beast, and Shepherd. So I had to draw a land to be able to do that. All right, I'm just going to save three life. I don't need that one one. No! I was not expecting the Playcrafter. But yeah, so if we draw six land, would still be nice. I could go Innkeeper, Shepherd, Beast. <laughs> Don't need that 1-1. One, one. Famous last words. Hmm. 
Yeah, it turns out blocking with that 1-1 one, one really hurt. This Mayhem Devil is so scary. I guess that's bad tapping. No, that's fine. Trying to stabilize. I don't love my chances of stabilizing, though. Alright, we got another two lane out. If they have the ability to start sacrificing stuff, we're in so much trouble. But as long as they don't, we're in so much trouble if they start sacrificing things. This was... Yes. Yes, attack. Oh, that is just so ideal for us, being able to trade Raisin Borrower. I need more green mana. Found more green mana. Alright, that's the card we need to gain lots of life next turn. We have the mana, though. I, I don't need to show my opponent... Hmm. 
I don't think I pay two life to be able to bounce something, do I? So I don't need it, because we're, we're going to get plain white celebration next turn. So if we survive here, we're going to be able to fay of wish for plain white celebration, be able to gain 16 life. Um, I could also probably find something to kill these mayhem devils in my sideboard. I don't know. But... Yeah, because we'll have eight extra mana. We just have to survive here. That's a good sign. Not not necessarily a good sign. They're saying good game. They must have drawn that something's going to kill me. Do they draw Witch's Oven off the Chew Lane? All they do is draw anything that sacrifices they did. Ugh. Needed one more turn. We finally found the Fae of Wishes that was going to gain us all the life. But my opponent finally found Witch's Oven. And... Needed one turn. Or one life. This is better. I like all these cards. I'm not sure which one to put back. Maybe it's the Beanstalk Giant? Basically, Paradise Druid and Beanstalk Giant both get mana. Thing is, Paradise Druid we get to play on turn two. And then we have four, ma four mana, and I can play like Innkeeper and Borrower. I'll be sad. I was gonna say I'll be sad if we draw a Lucky Clover after putting back the Beanstalk Giant. You would have tucked the Brazen. There are definitely times when Brazen isn't that useful early. I want to grab Time White, but then they know for sure to kill my Paradise Druid. I'm still going to.
The reason why they know to kill the Paradise Druid is because I have no white mana on the battlefield right now, and Time Wipe costs two white mana. The big question is what what would we save with time wipe? Yeah, Fay Wish, so good. Uh this song right now, this is Lifehouse. You and I. Nope, you and me. Yeah, bleeding black, what's your question? Gonna bounce pay of wish. I don't know. That's a tough one. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, instead of casting Time Wipe, I could have make them discard with Reggie and then bounce Reggie on their turn. Maybe we should have just done that. And just hold out, held on to Time Wipe. I don't know. Anyway, um... So I have Prison Realm that I can get next turn. I can go Fey of Wish, Prison Realm, and Exile, Questing Beast. Obviously, I was hoping they did not have removal for Kenrith. Getting planar cleansing is pretty slow. Unless I just wanted to do that the last turn, but then they know not to put anything else out and it would, I would just be having planar cleansing kill questing beast. Whoa. I'm not expecting that at all. Or we just have Giant Killer.
<clears throat> there's so many options. You know, when you're playing Fae of Wishes and everything, there's so many options. It's it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to navigate. You know, you really have to be thinking a couple of turns in advance. Close your eyes and listen to the sounds of the wild. My, my, how you've grown. So we get a white man, I guess. Probably gonna have shifting ceratops, or like they could have sh shifting ceratops. So if I just go two lane Fey, I die to ceratops. They can minus five and go grab. I, I wanted to get I wanted to go eight life and get the get the edgewall innkeeper back also, but I feel like we just have to be safer. Which I think that just using twelve getting twelve life is probably safer. Hey Wrinkler. I don't know, maybe we're supposed to get Innkeeper? So the next turn I go Innkeeper, Giant Killer, Fey of Wishes, and have the Brazen Borrower up. Well, that's pretty good for me. I don't oh, know, this Order of Midnight, though. Hmm. How are we going to deal with this Order of Midnight? I don't know yet. We're going to start with a very obvious play of Bounce Vivian. Sorry, Tulane. We just played all of our creatures. But now Vivian's gone. That's huge. Getting that thing out of here. So we have to play Kenrith before Chu Lane, because if I play Chu Lane, then they get to attack with these two threes, and I just have a two four. By playing Kenrith, we have a five five. They can't really attack with the creatures on the ground.
They had a fetch land? They could have gone and got even another land out of their deck and they just discard it. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Auto tap. I was planning on playing the Brazen Borrower and flashing that in and double blocking the Order of Midnight, but we'll just we'll just clean these up and just gain five life. It's fine. It's fine. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. As long as they don't kill Kenrith, we're pretty good. Honestly, we're just pretty good from here. Oh! I didn't tap the Riding Register. Whoopsie daisy. Well, that makes life a little harder. I guess we can chump with Fey of Wishes. Uh, All right, trouble with Faye. Didn't forget this time. <laughs> Jump with Kenrith. Okay, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. All right, perfect. Two lane draws a card. That was pretty good. Two lane. Going on an adventure. Killing some giants. <laughs> Kenrith's back is, is sore after that one. Yeah, Kenrith carried that one. Tournament crowns. Play a 7-6. Go ahead. Just go ahead and play Rotting Registrar. Go ahead. Don't play a whole bunch of knights and go really wide. Don't do that. And don't play Embercleave either. Definitely don't do that. 
No. No. Ugh. That was... That was a horrible turn for me. Yeah, at least I guess they didn't play Luxodon also. Sure. Uh... Basically trying to decide if I want to try to keep up Swift End. You know, like if, if Swift End is going to kill something. I don't know. I don't... This, this start that my opponent has, I don't really have confidence in us winning with what we got. Yeah, like this this is definitely a time that we would like our opponent to to stumble just a little bit and not have the hand that they did have. Huh. Must be Umbercleave. Yep. It's definitely Umbercleave. Well, we can't make him we can't beat Dumber Cleave. There's not not a block I can make that lets us stay alive. Whoa, not Ember Cleave. I should have just done this last turn. I should have just played those. Probably, but we just we need blockers, obviously. I, I should have just played the giant killer. I should have tapped one Paradise Druid and played a giant killer. GG. That's the deck we're playing up next. <clears throat> it is pretty good when it does stuff like that. We saw the power of Worthy Knight. That game. Our first time, Lucky Clover Beanstalk Giant. Yay. Aw. Thank you so much, Ambulance. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for joining on Twitch also. I appreciate that. Thank you. What are we doing over here? What are these night all these night decks killing us so fast. Our opponent was on the play last game too. It's 
Stemheart! Resubbing here on Twitch Prime. Welcome back. Second month now. Thanks, Stemheart. Oh, is that good? Is Triple Knight of the Ebon Legion good? I don't know. Yeah, this deck does have potential in best of three. Yeah, you you need to kind of change up your sideboard a little bit, play more of a, a real, you know, play more of a of a sideboard with with some other cards that are not just a Fae of Wish sideboard. You know, you you wouldn't want to play the exact seventy five. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. If they activate a Knight of the Ebon Legion, we're taking 10 and going down to 3, and then all of their Knights are lethal. Needed something that was not a land. <laughs> I don't really have. Any outs right now? Nope, don't have any outs. It may do better in best of three with when you don't see nearly this much aggro. Maybe. There's nothing that I can even fav that I can fav wish for with just the three mana. Yeah, those are just two really awesome aggro hands back to back with the opponents being on the play. It's tough to stop. This is a hand. We get Lucky Clover Beanstalk Giant again. And we have an Innkeeper. Keep that card draw going. Let's start with Paradise Druid. So we have Giant Killer for Nightpack Ambusher. The problem with using Giant Killer for Nightpack Ambusher, of course, is that we have Lucky Clover. 
Well, that's good for me. Well, I mean, that also means they don't have Nightpack Ambusher, which means my Giant Killer isn't... Is it going to do as much? Hmm. I really don't want Innkeeper countered. You know, like, I want to play Innkeeper first, but I don't want it countered. We do have a Teferi in the, in the sideboard that we could grab with uh, the thing that grabs it. Maybe they counter this. Awesome. So they definitely do not have... Ugh, darn. They definitely do not have Nightpack Ambusher in hand right now. That doesn't mean that they're not going to draw it, though. I hope they don't draw it, because I just played my giant killer. But they could have, you know, just found it with that opt. Who knows? I guess I could have played around that by playing a land first. draw spells to win though we're not going to win with these four cards that we have in play we're going to need to draw spells that's a good one that is a good one All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Does not seem like they have this this resolved very fast. I don't think they have another mystical dispute. Honestly, I just shouldn't even be attacking. I should just be casting Fae of Wishes. Sweet. That was a good one to draw. Okay, two and three. <laughs> Faye is balanced. Don't worry about it. Need lots of mana. 
but with lots of mana. It's incredible. VT log, a 10 month resub. You're amazing. Thank you so much there, VT log. Gets us to nine subs on the day. One more till our first sub goal. Steamkin. Just so good. That Bone Crusher Giant's gone now. That was just perfect. gonna bounce that right now with them missing a land drop if they spend next turn recasting steamkin i'm just fine or they're casting that i just obviously just want to draw lots of cards with innkeeper Hey, Jeremy. Happy holidays. This game looks pretty over. Well, maybe not. Who knows? Maybe Cranko can crank out a win. Okay. Cranko doing its thing. Good job, Cranko. Cranko cool. Okay, let's see. Well, let's let's just get these things in play now. You know, just putting pressure on their mana. Yeah, they just gotta like recast everything. They just don't have the ability to. And obviously we just have all the mana in the world. <clears throat> they don't. Another great hand. Well, we'll kind of see. We don't. Have, this doesn't. This isn't a hand that gets a lot of a lot of mana. Duns. Thanks to the Twitch Prime sub. Five month streak. All right, that's another sub goal. Y'all know how it goes. So every ten subs is a sub goal. And uh, you know we just add those up. There's the panel down below that, that has them. And then every 20 sub goals, we do 10 and 20. 
10 subs is a sub goal. Every 20 sub goals, we do a 12 hour stream to celebrate. So that one is, let's go update it right now. That's sub goal number 11. So we're over halfway to the next 12 hour stream. Well, hopefully our 26 land deck can draw some lands. Ideally, we play land, other Lucky Clover, and then Love Struck Beast here and make three 1-1s, one ideally. But obviously, that could be too slow against a, a strong Gruul start. Which they definitely have. Them having four mana already and us struggling. Hmm. Sometimes you're the deck with all the mana. Sometimes you're the deck stuck on lands. Maybe the last two cards are just both lands in hand as well. So I'm blocking the 1-1 one, one and hoping that they don't have more 1-1s one, to be able to have the Love Struck Beast continue to attack. And then we're also going to uh, chump the Love Struck Beast as well here. Sure, you just have turn 4 Embercleave. Why not? That's not all. That's just lethal. There's Gruel in a nutshell. Just got curve out and kill your opponent. All right, so it's it's kind of early still. We've gone through these leagues real fast. Kind of early still. I, I like this deck that we're playing. I, I've been enjoying playing it. I'm going to play it a little bit more instead of just playing the seven games. Boros Knights isn't going to take very long either. So we got we got some extra time. So I'm going to play some more. Three of our losses have been to aggro with us being on the draw. Which that's, that happens with best of one. Them having really quality hands and us being on the draw. We have a really strong hand for us here though. But we're on the draw, but let's we'll see how it how it goes. This is <clears throat> This is very good though. Oh, the 
bad auto tap. Don't get to replay the Pell Collector. Don't get to attack at all. Hmm. Let's just play that thing. We can have double chop down here. Wow, our hand was just awesome. Oh man, now we get the value of Chu Lane. Man, this is such an ideal hand. All right, so we're gonna have, perfect, two lane. Edgewall Innkeeper, draw a card. Giant Killer, draw two. We didn't get to put any lands into play because we just got more gas. What, what an insane hand we had there. GG. GG. Uh, is Golgari food still viable? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. As far as I know. Yeah, I would think so. I'm not sure if having the better mana and sticking to Golgari is is better than having worse mana, but having Corvold. And then you get Mayhem Devil too, but it's really about Corvold for the Jun deck. We're always on the draw. Never on the play. I don't think we can sit back. I don't think this is the kind of match where we're gonna really just like you know sit back and wait a long time with Innkeeper, because I'm, I want to play the Fae of Wishes. Ooh, they missed land drop. That's not good for them. It is good for me. Let's play a couple more. We'll do two more. Those are two very fast ones. At least that, that last one is really fast. We're always on the draw. It's not how you win in best of one. Is being on the draw is not good. So 
So I think we're gonna just have like Beanstalk Giant on three, Beanstalk Giant on four, Chew Lane plus Edgewall Innkeeper. All right, a deck tech. What? All right. Check PMs for deck list. Okay, slow deck. So, Esper Dance. Can we deal with Esper Dance here? Oh my gosh. I am not good. All right, Chris. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a link here, Chris, to to be able to um, because um, as you can see, like how that that text is real blocky. Use use that link there to put the deck list on there. This is five. All right, and then we'll then we'll we'll do the deck deck tech after oh, these protect. two games. So I'm gonna play. I'm playing two more. This one and one more. We'll we'll be able to end on an odd number. I guess if this game goes long, maybe we end here and and then it's ten matches. We'll see. Okay. Anyway. Um, Five color elementals with Niv sounds awesome. I don't know how consistent it would be and how good it'd be to be able to, like if you can stay alive against aggro, but that sounds like an awesome deck. Whoops. My plan this turn was to play Chu Lane, Innkeeper, and Giant Killer all together. That was my plan this turn. But then we drew that. Let's try this. Right. They're just gonna do that. Maybe I should just grab Dovin's Veto.
Perfect. Thank you, Chris. They likely have... Likely have a sweeper, but we did get to just draw a lot of cards. And, you know, we're forcing them to have a sweeper, but they likely do. I've got it. So I'm glad we didn't have to play the Fae of Wishes into that. What am I thinking? Why would I why would I want Dovin's veto? They have to ferry. I want Dovin's veto. I shouldn't have gone and grabbed that Ashiok. I should have played like the the two lane and the two cards first the last time. So one two three four one two three four one two three, perfect. So I have a, my plan is discard these two cards, put Fae of Wishes back into my hand, have Fae of Wish go grab Tamio. Tamio, go get Ashiok. Trust me, I have a plan. If they play dance and bring all this stuff back, though, then I can also go grab Planar Cleansing and Planar Cleansing, but that's not as. That's good for me. Sure, what my plan is.
need one more mana. That's true. I could... Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I could have just shepherded it back. Yeah, and then I would have had my one extra mana. Uh, yeah, I could have just done that. <laughs> I've been just trying to think of like how what we're going to be doing with Fae of Wishes so much. Yes, that, that definitely would have been a lot better. Yes, that, that would have been a lot better. And You will find my note helpful. Yeah, I have a planar cleansing in the sideboard, but I feel like I think they have another dance in hand. I need to hold up this veto. Oh, come on. That's not good. That's not good. Oh, that's not good at all. No, I needed that Tamiyo. Because Tamiyo shuts down Doom Foretold. We don't have to sacrifice with Tamiyo in play. And so, like, the... The Doom Foretold... Like, Tamiyo was shutting those down. Now they make us discard. They're going to make us discard the Vitos. Oh my gosh, they just... They just let me play that? Why don't they just wait? I just have to discard my, my veto to Doom Foretold. Why don't they just wait? Oh, 
Uh, I guess I guess we're dead now anyway. Ugh. Yeah, now we lose the life because Doom foretold. Man, that that cavalier. That got me. All right, last game. We got to break the tie. And then we got a deck tech to do. And then we'll have Boros Knights. All right, we want a die roll. We haven't been doing that. So we want a die roll. We have double Beanstalk Giant to go with this Lucky Clover. All right, have a good night, Storm. I guess I should have just played the one ones. I held I held up borrower, but I guess I should have just just got out the two one ones. I suppose. Then I could have played the love struck beast this turn. I no, I don't think you lose life with Tamio in play. I don't think so. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. Yeah, I basically just think that the the trigger basically the trigger just doesn't do anything. My, my opponent needed a creature that killed Tamio, and they did. They had one. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Bounce the giant. Bounce the giant. Awesome. This might be a bad idea.
Right, you just don't sacrifice. It's not It's not that you can't. You just you don't have to. So I don't think Doom foretold triggers at all. I think it just goes over to their side and then they have to sack more things. Ugh, I could use a Chew Lane or an Edgewall Innkeeper. Right, so basically, basically Doom Foretold, it, it says sacrifice stuff, but Tamiyo says you don't have to sacrifice, so basically nothing happens. And then it just goes back over to their turn, and then on, on their turn, Doom Foretold, you know, makes them sacrifice and everything. Doom Foretold does not pop on your turn when you have Tamiyo in play. It doesn't just, it's not a if you can't, because you could, you, you just don't have to. Well, we drew we drew a lot of ramp and that was awesome but we've drawn none of our engine cards you know no innkeeper no two lane not even a not even a fave wishes you know like we need fave wishes also <clears throat> we haven't drawn any of those 10 cards even though we've thinned the deck quite a bit we still could though Game's not over. We've gone through 23 cards. None of those 10 yet. Hey, D Dr. K and Viper. What's up, y'all?
The Doom Foretold still activates? Are y'all sure? Y'all said you've tried it and the Doom Foretold still activates? I wouldn't think it would. Our best draw is, of course, Fae of Wishes by now. With all this mana that we have. Yay! So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. All right, so I was wrong. Trust me. You'll thank me later. No, I am not making this up as I go. Four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I think my plan is here to have <clears throat> Shepard return the Giant Killer and the Brazen Borrower back to my hand. Brazen Borrower can bounce a couple of big creatures if they play a couple of big creatures. They're just going to go fires in one creature. Got 
33 cards in library. Okay. <clears throat> I think we're going to be able to figure out a way to win that. Probably with Finale of Devastation very soon. Or the, the green Finale. I think that's Finale of Devastation. It always kind of felt weird to me that the green Finale was Devastation and the red Finale was Promise. I mixed those two up for a while. Okay, but we went six and five. You know, so we went with po positive record there. This deck was definitely fun to play. Uh, you know, a way to use Chew Lane. We got to do some really cool stuff with Chew Lane for sure. Um, the aggro decks, when they were on the play and had and had really good hands, they were you know we were losing. That was those were a good amount of our losses were being on the draw against aggro that had a really fast hand. Um, that's just kind of how it is. Um, but you saw that we had a ton of power in the late games. Uh, certainly. Um, yeah, I don't know if like the sideboard's perfect. There's probably better things to be doing over there in the sideboard. Um, like, or, you know, like there, uh, yeah, like you could maybe change a couple of things over here in the sideboard. Yeah, you could have a Finale of Glory as well, but if you're a Finale of Glory, probably Finale of Devastation kills your opponent. Um, but yeah, you could have that also. There's a lot of options. A lot of options. I feel like I should not have lost to the... I feel like I, I played... Uh, I, I feel like I made wrong decisions to lose to the Esper Dance deck. I think, I think that I could have won that match um, if I would have made better decisions. But it's tough. It's a tough... Uh, Tough, um, tough deck to play because there's just so many decisions to make with Fey of Wishes and Chew Lane and everything. There's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, decisions to make there. <laughs> yeah, place on the internet somewhere where you write and post opinions. Yes, of course on Patreon. Yeah, for those y'all um, watching, uh, also on uh, YouTube, if you want to help support my videos, it's just three dollars a month to sign up for my Patreon. Where, I'm, where I write posts over there. Um, I'm planning tomorrow to write a post for a kind of like a sideboard guide and deck tech on the mono green midrange deck that we played yesterday. Um, I like that deck a lot, so I'm planning on writing a, a sideboard guide for that deck tomorrow on the Patreon. Um, yeah, so it's just $3 a month. Did the math. It's, it's like um, just a, a couple of cents for each uh, YouTube video that I put out there. So if you want to help support me over there, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, but anyway, that's it here for Chew Lane Adventure. Also, the y'all on YouTube, uh, hit that like button over there. But also let me know what you think of the deck in the comment section. And if you're playing it yourself, um, how are you enjoying the deck and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, that's it here. Hey, Krill. Krill, brand new Twitch Prime sub. Thanks, Krill. Awesome. Thank you. But thank you so much for watching some Chew Lane Adventure, and I'll see you for the next video.